Hey guys, what's up? I'm Emily, if you don't know who I am. Um, today I'm going to be talking about my type 1 diabetes diagnosis. So, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 11 years old. So, I guess a little bit of background. When I was 10, so in 2007, I was diagnosed with a kidney disease called juvenile nephrotic syndrome. So basically, my kidneys didn't filter properly, and thankfully, it has now, I've outgrown it, essentially. It, you can have, like, juvenile nephrotic syndrome and nephrotic syndrome. I, thankfully, outgrew mine, so I'm very grateful for that. And to treat this kidney disease, I was on a steroid called prednisone. So, one of the effects of prednisone is high blood sugar. So, I was in grade 6 at the time. It was 2008. I was 11. And it was about 2 or 3 weeks prior to my diagnosis. I went in for routine blood work and checkup. Just because I did have this kidney disease, I had to go to the doctor quite regularly. And one evening, my doctor phoned my parents at home. And he didn't say a whole lot. He Okay, sorry, my camera died. So, I'm not sure where it cut off at, so... My doctor phoned my parents at home, and it was like 7 o'clock in the evening, which was kind of weird. He didn't sound overly concerned, he just asked, is there any way that you can check Emily's blood sugar? And my dad happened to have a blood meter from work for some reason. I don't know. He's a town administrator. I don't know why he would have a blood meter, but he did. And so we checked it, and then I got sent to bed because I had to go to school the next day. And the reading just was HI, high. And so we didn't really know what that meant, so my mom phoned my aunt, who is a nurse, and said, like, is this something we should be concerned about? Like, should I call our doctor back? Like, what's all going on? And my aunt said, you need to take Emily to the hospital now. So, my mom loaded me up into the vehicle. We didn't really know what was going on. We, like, all my mom had was her purse and wallet and a water bottle. And we drove 20 minutes to the nearest hospital and explained to the nurse like this is what her doctor said so we did it it read high and the nurse kind of looked at my mom with these big eyes and she's like well we're gonna go get our blood meter which reads to 37 i don't know what that is american i'm sorry i'm canadian <laughs> so they grabbed their blood meter and checked it and it was still reading high so at that point I was hooked up to IV saline and the doctor that was on call in the ER phoned the Royal University Hospital in Saskatoon because it was a small town hospital. Um, they don't really do a lot of testing. It's mainly for like older individuals who need around the clock care. So I was then taken by ambulance to Saskatoon and the doctor there they called in endocrinology and hooked me up to insulin and started wean weaning me off of prednisone you can't just stop prednisone cold turkey it can do severe damage to your organs so they weaned me off and keep in mind I was on a very high dose of prednisone and I was and I didn't display a lot of the symptoms that most type 1 diabetics do I was very thirsty all the time, but another side effect of prednisone is being dehydrated. So they weaned me off prednisone, took me off insulin and saline, and did some tests, and it came back that I was type 1 diabetic. And the endocrinologist stated that I most likely would have been diagnosed later on in my life, but the prednisone and the kidney disease brought it on sooner. So I was in the hospital for two weeks, my time of diagnosis. I was actually diagnosed on March 23rd, 2008, which was actually Easter Sunday. So I don't think I got any chocolate that year, but I don't remember being upset about it. 
So for the first five years of my diagnosis, I was on manual daily in injections, um, had fairly good control. I actually got my pump six or seven years ago now on Valentine's Day. Um, it, I just reached a point where I was going into DKA all the time and we couldn't explain why. Basically anytime I wasn't on IV fluids and insulin, I was in DKA. I would just get out of the hospital and two days later I would be back. I think I was hospitalized when I was 16 almost 15 times in a school year. So it was definitely very scary. Um, yeah, so now I have a Medtronic pump. Again, I am not wearing the correct shirt for this. I actually have my sight currently in my arm. Um, I do have a vlog where I change my pump sight on camera. So if you want to see that, I will link it down below. And I do have a Freestyle Libre to check my blood sugar now so I don't have to like manually poke my finger, which is amazing. So, originally when I was going to make this video, I had asked for some questions on Instagram. Unfortunately, I thought the footage was good and I didn't save those questions. So, I'm just going to talk a little bit about my experience with type 1 diabetes. I have found that you can't let it take over your life. If you let something take over your life, it becomes almost like an obsession and you're constantly thinking about it and worrying about it not that not I'm not saying that you shouldn't think about your diabetes all the time you definitely should but you also need to make sure that you're taking time for yourself I do remember one of the questions was how does it impact your daily life so in all honesty it really doesn't I don't really remember a time where I wasn't type 1 diabetic I don't really remember not having to do needles or like boluses and counting carbs. I don't really remember my life before that. So it doesn't really affect my daily life. Of course it does when I have things like lows and highs or I'm sick. But on a normal day-to-day -day basis, it's kind of at the back of my head at this point. Mind you, I do have a lot of other health issues going on, so that could be why. Um, yeah, if you have any questions regarding type 1 diabetes at all, please leave them in the comments below or you can always ask on my Instagram, it's at chronicallyemilyt, I would love to answer questions there. You can either leave them in a comment or on like one of my photos or you can always DM me, whichever works for you. So I think that's all I have for you today, If and until next time, I hope you guys are well. And I'll see you in the next video.